what's up? I'm Big Tank, and we're about to learn a little bit of Ableton today. All right, so first, let's just go over the things up top. The file. This is how you get a new set. If you already have a project and you want to open up sets or you want to open your recent set, it will be here. Install packs, I'll do that for you guys. That's going to take some time. There's no packs here today, but save. You always want to save live set as. You don't really want to use save live set. It'll record over your stuff, so you want to save live set as. Or save a copy. And export is how you bounce a beat. Bouncing a beat is something I'll show you guys as we get a little bit more into this. Edit. When you make a mistake, there's a, a thing here that says un, um, undo uh, cut clip. So if you make a mistake, you can just push undo. All these things aren't lit right now because we haven't used them all. Freeze track is something that um, I'll get into later. It's kind of um, more advanced. If you have MIDI already there and you want to com um, completely turn it into audio, that's what that's for. Flatten is you freeze it, then you flatten it, and it'll make MIDI audio. And I'll, I'll give you an example of that. Quantize, quantize settings, record quantize. You see eighth note, quarter note, 16th note, um, and whatnot, and 32nd note. Um, that'll be the speed in which things lock up. You can group and ungroup things, loop certain sections if you want to. All right. Um, the create function, I don't really use that much. You're not going to really use a lot of MIDI anymore because we're now using USB as MIDI. Um, add locator if you want to change locations. Uh, the different views, you got few, uh, full screen, second window, and then you got your overview. Show browser, the ins and outs, returns, mixer. I'll get into all of that, but you don't need that up front. Edit MIDI. These are all things that you could possibly use eventually, but at the top, you guys aren't going to be ready for that. Preferences. This is the most important thing you got to find on here, outside of quantize and whatnot. There's a look and feel. Don't touch that. Audio, I'll have it set up for you. You don't want to touch that. Link in MIDI. It's already set up. Files and folders. This is how you're going to be able to find your sounds um, once I import those. Your library is the stuff that Ableton comes with. Plugins are things we'll add as we go. Um, I'll have my computer guy add a bunch of plugins to here. Um, plugins are basically sounds. So um, when I first started making music, we had keyboards and we had a bunch of other keyboards, and that's where like all the sounds were at. Now you, all you need is a computer and one keyboard, and all the sounds are in what's called plugins. All right, um, warping. This is for sampling, doing remixes, uh, record warp, whatnot, and then light, uh, license and maintenance. You guys are never going to deal with that. So, all right, let's start here. Up top we have the tempo, so I'm just making it faster, slower, faster, slower. This is your four four count in. This is the metronome right here. If you turn it off. You won't hear it. And when you're recording vocals or whatnot, you don't really want the metronome on. Only when you're making the beat. This is how producers stay in rhythm. And when I turn it on, you'll hear it. All right, so that's the metronome playing at 135 beats per minute. If I slow that down to 94, now that's a 94 beat per minute. If you come over here, this blue one, under the master is the volume that you can play everything out loud, right? And this is your metronome click, right? So I like to have my metronome at like zero. Once I start putting in sounds, that volume will get louder, okay? So let's go over quantize first. When you want to get your sounds, you can come to instruments. I'm going to give you guys drums, but you guys have some in here. They're probably corny, but we'll still just use some for today. And then there's also sounds here. But let's go into, all right, let's just use, go into your sounds. You'll see ambient. And you know, all these things have drop down menus. This is why this is such a great program, just to start with. Like, let's get a guitar. So you see this guitar? See, I opened it up. You drag it to a track, like so. And then down here, you can see your guitar. And if you hit the keyboard, now, if I want to go into the, the quantize that we were talking about before, it's under edit. Every time you want to edit something, 
Um, look at editing as changing and fixing. All right. When you want to edit something, you come down here, you go to quantize. If I put it on no quantize, uh, you know what? Let me, before I do that, let me go into your transport bar. All right. The signatures are usually one, two, three, four, right? If I push play, two, three, four. If I turn this on, this, this right here, and I push record, it'll give me a count in of one bar. Two, three, four, right? And we're in. You can make that a two bar count in if you want to. You can make it anything you want. All right, or you can turn it to none. And I'll just start right away. So I'm gonna loop this, and the way that you loop it, like when you're making a beat, you wanna like have this little middle circle on. If I turn it off, you see that line go away? So when it plays, it'll just continue to go past that. When you're recording vocals, you don't want the loop on. But when you're making a track, you want it on because you're gonna be building different things like kicks and snares and hi-hats and whatnot. And we'll get into that as well. But first, let's go over just what quantize means. Quantize holds you in the rhythm. So if I go... Right? Oh, I don't have overdub on which is also a good thing that we gotta go over, yay. All right, when you're gonna record, you wanna make sure you have your loop function on, and you wanna also make sure you have this plus button, because if you don't, you'll record over your own stuff. So we're just gonna make this one bar for now, shrink that loop down to one bar, and you can see one right here. The magnifying glass will just pop up, you just pull down, and that'll show you that. So if I'm gonna re record, right, so if I don't have the plus on, and I go, see how I went over it? Now if I put plus on here, that means you can also add to whatever you did. So now we're gonna go. So now I'm gonna go. All right, so that's very, very important when you guys are making a beat, okay? So now let's delete this and let me explain quantize. So if I wanted to go da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da, now a lot of you guys may not have good freehand rhythm at first, so I'm just gonna do it sloppily, okay? Three and... See how it basically picked up exactly what I did? Now if we quantize that, we go to edit. The most common quantized signature is 16th note. So let's delete that, cut it. Now this time, I'm gonna go out um, of rhythm again, just so you can see how it'll fix it for you. I see, so I was a little bit off. So, but it pretty much fixed everything. Now, let's say I wanted to take um, that and go da 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 This one right here is the one that's off. All right, so when I double click on the, the MIDI file, it's gonna show up down here and you'll see a grid. Let me make that bigger for you, okay? Now, you don't want the pencil. The pencil will draw in. You could draw one in right here and then drag it out and then click here, and it'll be gone. Now let's listen. Took all my swag and just got rid of it, right? So let's take the draw function off, get the arrow, and move it up. Now it's gonna go, right? Now this is the grid. You see it's 164? That's a really, really, really like big numbers. And as you get it closer and shorter, you'll see it change. You see the numbers down here change? Watch this. Right here, this is the grid in which you're working on. So each of these things have lines, that's the grid, okay? So we're gonna shrink this thing up. So we're gonna go, and it'll just lock into whatever number this is on. These will just lock right into it, so. 
So if you want to change that up a little bit, it'll just lock to the next one. And so let's scoot that one up and go da 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 da. Still not where I want it. Closer. There we go. Dun, 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 dun. Get it? Now let's put one here. If you double click it, it'll just be there. Drag it out. All right. So let's go. That sounds. That note right there. So let's go an octave lower. And just add to that. Right, so now we have two sounds. If I double click it, you can see they're both in B. This will even tell you like the note you played. It's very, very, very intuitive. But they're both in B and you can see your rhythm, right? Now if you wanna change this and move this or if you want your bass note, like right now this is on 64. Let's make it way smaller. Let's make it 16. Matter of fact, you can change we in here, quantize, quantize settings, extract groove, set. That's for samples. Activate loop, which we've already done. All right? But I usually like to have this on like medium. When it's narrow, you gotta have it too small. Now, if you notice what I just did, I have it now. These numbers are wide. I made this wider, but this is on 16th now. So it's way easier to manage now. You can go to draw. Just click one in here, here, now go. All right, so let's say you want to put one here and here. Oh, wait, maybe you want to put two. If you want to add another one, that's at 16th, make it bigger. Once it goes to 32, you see that? So basically, 16th notes are like that long. If I want to make it a 32nd note, I just go here. Now it's going to double up, watch. So I hope that makes sense to everybody.